Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. This is the second video where we've covered Stable Refusion, uh, one of the more novel tools. Um, it's an open source project that lets you take text input and turn that into an infinite audio beat that you can also tune after the fact and can generate indefinitely. There have been a few YouTube projects that have done infinite Stable Refusion loops. Um, they're not really up now, but hopefully they'll come back. And yeah, in this video, I wanna go over what the improvements are, whether or not it's actually better after these updates. Also on sort of a different note, covering some other audio tools that actually came far before a lot of the stable fusion models or just diffusion models in general that we see doing audio things now. So right off the bat, Stable Refusion now has their own subreddit. So r slash Refusion. It's uh, not super active, but there are over a thousand people using it now. That's where I saw this release. So we're gonna go through the full release on GitHub since it gets a bit more in depth with what they did. But uh, at a high level, what's cool is the two developers of this project decided to do an entire rewrite after um, the response was so positive when they announced sort of their hack together prototype, which is really cool. They still have their web demo, which I think is the best of a lot of the fusion models I've seen. It's not just on Hugging Face. Uh, in short, they say this release includes a full rewrite from hack to quality software project. It also includes a CLI tool, which basically means you can wrap this, you can do way more with this, and an interactive streamlit app for common tasks. Um, MPS backend support, stereo spectrogram encoding, which, which is a big deal since prior everything was just mono, and a test suite run by CI and more. So basically it just means that if they continue working on this project, um, you have CI, it just means that running tests is pretty straightforward. Um, projects like, like YFU Diffusion have actually started doing this. It's something you see on larger open source projects, so that's kind of cool. They say the CLI tool and Streamlit background are very extensible, so I hope that you will hop on and submit PRs and raise issues. So they're just saying well, I, they hope people will actually start contributing so they can improve this beyond themselves. This is something that is already pretty common um, within the Stable Diffusion community. Uh, if you follow bigger projects like Automatic 11.11, you can tell that there's a lot of development outside of just the core developers. So I thought that was kind of cool. Now we can take a look at it. So uh, another cool offshoot of this is there's now a dedicated plugin for uh, the Automatic 11.11 web UI. Cool, there'll be a link in the description to, uh, to this. So running it locally is a bit more simple. Callouts from their full release notes that I think are cool is uh, they've, one, just cleaned it up so the code is far more readable. They have a much more efficient way of um, converting between spectrogram images and audio, specifically handling doing this with stereo spectrograms, which, which is kind of cool. These spectrogram tensors are another one that are kind of new. They've also now used better audio tooling. Previously, they were just using kind of their own implementation and they're using a real audio library now, which is kind of cool. And things sound a little bit better, like it's hard. This is more of a improvement that will probably make future changes better, but it still sounds pretty cool. The CLI is a big deal because now interacting with this in a pretty clear way is very straightforward. Yeah, they also have a Streamlit app. It makes it easier to understand how this is used and learn how to use it. And for the uh, electrical engineering people out there, you can you can now run uh, this whole project on uh, MIPS and CPU backends without CUDA. Stereo spectrograms, I think, is the coolest addition here, which basically means you, you can send in stereo audio without having to demux and have it be mono when you send it in. Another really cool thing they did, which is not something you can see outside of this project, is they've used image EXIF data to encode a bunch of uh, audio frequency information or just metadata, which is very cool. Another thing I was surprised they didn't mention in the Reddit post is right here. So adding a capability to apply normalization and compression to audio using PyDub, which they just say is post-processing filters. But what's cool about this is it means you can do similar things to how you fine tune um, image diffusion models. Uh, so it means that you can sort of restrict output in interesting ways, maybe to get sounds that are closer to what you want. The test suite, that's mostly just for their use to speed up development of this tool. So just basic boilerplate kind of housekeeping. It's, you know, not super active, but Clearly, 100 people have forked it, 1,000 people are tracking changes to it, which is pretty cool. Now, the next thing I wanted to go over is, is it still good? So I will say the text encoder hasn't changed. They're using the same text encoder in BAE that's currently used in Stable Diffusion 1.5, which is what they were using before when they released the first version. So big question is, does it still sound good or is it markedly any better? So what's interesting is when you use this on the website, uh, occasionally it will generate 
stereo audio and occasionally it'll stereo, it'll generate mono. Not really sure why that is. And the recommended prompts they give you that are just there by default, they have much more depth. So everything still kind of sounds like elevator music, but obviously there's a lot going on behind the scenes here. What I will say is individual instruments and distinctly different subjects in the sound or in the beats are better. And the transitions between multiple sections of generated audio appears to be better smooth, which I think likely is from PyDub and how they're transposing kind of those transitions. So I'll hit, I'll do this. So this is 125 beat per minute Coldplay style Afrobeat. So what's cool is clearly there's a bass line, there's a pretty coherent melody, there's some percussion, and it still sounds kind of machine driven, obviously, like sort of a call waiting. Uh, if you're Gen Z, you might not even know what call waiting is. But uh, but yeah, and then what I, what I do like is they've added a clear visualization for when you're getting to the end of a sequence. So you'll see kind of a red line, like right there, there's actually a clear red line that uh, delineates those. So we can do something. And voice tracks work really well now too. That's the other thing. They generally are not super coherent words or words that span more than half of a given sequence. But it is kind of cool to see that it's not confusing voices with horn sounds like it was in the past version. Atmospheric stuff is also getting really good. So like generating atmospheric like ambient tones for videos, I think we're getting pretty close to this. And this sounds really 80s. Like this is actually kind of disappointing, but it's uh if I wanted a very synthy 80s dreamlike atmosphere for a call waiting, I don't know why you'd buy that now. This is a great way to do that. So so yeah, so this has gotten a lot better. So People are really excited about about audio, but I think it's important to recognize that one of the first projects released by OpenAI before anyone really cared about what they were doing or knew of them is Jukebox. So there have been YouTube streams, like, like infinite streams of music generated by Jukebox available since really 2020. And what I think is cool is this was actually first released almost three years ago. So it, right here, it says, uh, April 20th or April 30th, 2020. And uh, obviously like you, you couldn't use it at that point, but now there's a full API, you can demo it pretty quickly. And I will say the specific focus of this uh, using CNNs or convol convolutional neural networks to generate audio, the, the, the impetus is different than stable refusion because it was not necessarily taking a, a text prompt and turning it into audio. It was more so giving it a bunch of audio and then dealing with some compression problems. So basically to make it happen in faster than real time and then using it to copy more of kind of a vibe or a specific genre than just a beat or doing that infinitely. And initially it was not very good. Um, and the other thing is a lot of these examples since they're somewhat academic um, and it's open AI, they're all based on an original reconstructed um, and then multiple iterations of reconstruction. And this is done basically to gauge its effectiveness against uh, like a ground truth. So it's actually a pretty good way of understanding if it's working well or not. Uh, and then what's interesting is towards the tail end of a lot of active work going on with Jukebox, uh, they started looking to using transformers to do this, which was actually pretty cool, but like the root of most of this project is uh, this thing here that they call a VQ VAE, which they say uh, is used to generate music in this compressed discrete space, which again is pretty much them saying we wanted to find a way to do this uh, in faster than real time. So for instance, uh, a similar technology is used uh, by Shazam to speed up searching through a bunch of audio uh, and like fingerprinting it, which is kind of cool. And what's interesting is Jukebox is really good, um, considering this was three years ago and it wasn't blowing people's minds. But for instance, this is um, Nirvana run through it. So one thing that's kind of interesting is you, there are similar quirks in this that you still see in Stable Refusion, which are 
in my opinion, more infrastructure kind of core challenges than challenges with just the implementation of the models. So by that, I mean with um, Jukebox, you can tell that it's trying to copy between like eight to 12 seconds of a phrase of music. Uh, it, it's why it seems just noisy and it's hard to find something your ear can really follow. And it, it's a cool thing that Stabler Fusion does well, granted in a much, much simpler way. It's, it's not trying to copy like the entire way an artist sounds. It's just trying to copy the base elements of a beat that can repeat. Uh, but here you can tell it's, it's, it's hard to kind of latch on any one thing to follow, which is, and sometimes it's coherent and then sometimes it's really reaching around and not finding much. So also I'll, I'll link down here um, to some other stuff that was released directly from OpenAI. So this is um, actually quite good. It's titled Heavy Robots Choir, which is funny because it's it's like a robotic hardcore screamo. And um, it's actually not bad, but then again, some, some could argue weren't into metal that metal is also not really bad, but also not really great. So that's Stable Refusion version uh, 03. I hope you guys check this out. Um, definitely check out their website where they have a, a live demo you can use entirely for free without any installation. Uh, all the links are in below, as always. And as always, again, I hope you learned something, and I'll talk to you all soon.